Hey, and so this is what I'm showing you how to create. So if I hit play, this is the functionality that we got. So I come into the game, I'm walking around, and I see this thing floating over there, and I walk over to it, I hit D, and it gives me a message. In the beginning, the crystal cracked. Look for the red sign in the road. May the force be with you. Huh, okay, cool, enough. And then I walk away from this, and the sign goes away. And then there's another one over here. I come to it, and I press D. A great sadness has filled the land. Look no further than the bridge, for there you will find the answers for what plagues your soul. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. And then I walk, I leave there, and off I go. So you can put an endless number of these markers. You can have them be whatever you want them to be. But this is has an incredible functionality and so I'll uh, walk you through this now. This is the first part of this tutorial of how to create endless notes, endless story cards, endless flash cards for your game. So it's with just one blueprint. So anyway, you need some images to start with. So here, let's say I'm in Photoshop and this is just 500 by 500. It's important that your whatever your image size be that it's consistent. So I'm just doing 500 by 500. The first part of this tutorial of how to create endless notes, endless story cards, endless flash cards for your game. So on just with just one blueprint. So anyway, it's some images to start with. So here, let's say I'm in Photoshop and this is just 500 by 500. It's important that your whatever your image size be that it's consistent. So I'm just doing 500 by 500. Technically, I guess I should do 512 by 512. I think they said they like powers of two, so. Okay, so that's it. So this is just Photoshop. And then I just, in Photoshop, whatever program you use, just come in here, you could type some, you know, your whatever, your, whatever you want to type, you know. This is just like a story card. And then you just would save this out as a, a JPEG or whatever, save for web, save it as a JPEG. So I just want to show you how easy it is to create these cards. And then we'll move on to step two. Okay, to get started with this, we're going to just go into games and first person template and just call it my project and let it load up. I'll try to do my best to explain this as I can. Sometimes it seems like it gets a little confusing. I already showed you how to create your signs. So I'm just going to go into my desktop here and I have these journey one and journey two and I'll just go OK and bring those in. So bring in your imagery and you could have literally 20 of these, 50 of these, 100 of these. So as many of these as you want. And that's the beauty of the system is that you only need one blueprint to do this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the first person blueprint here, this one. And we're just going to create a single variable. So we're just going to come here to variable and I'm going to call this note card index and this is going to be an integer and it's going to be public note card index and we just go compile and save and we can draw from this variable later so we'll be doing some casting to and we'll be pulling from this first person but we're basically that's all we do have to do here so that's done and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our kind of our widget interface so let me go back in here into content and I'm going to right click and go user interface widget blueprint user and I'm going to call this note card display and we have some work to do in here this is really kind of a, I can go ahead and dock this. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a canvas. So I'll go canvas, panel, and I'll drag that onto the scene. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and type an image, and I'm gonna image, and I'm gonna drag this onto the scene here. Now this image needs to be the same size as what I created, so the image. So it's 512 by 512, so I'll go 512 by 512. And my position, I'll put my anchor here in the center right there, but my X and Y posi positions off, so I'll zero those out. And you notice I'm still off center. So what I have to do is come to alignment and type in 0.5 and 0.5, and then I'm perfectly centered in the screen. And so that's all I need to do for my display. So I can compile 
and save that. And if you come over here and you look, if I click on the display, you could set an image statically on here by selecting an image, but we that's not what we want to do. We want to be able to store all of our images in an array and then have them display. So that's what all these variables are for. They're going to be holding these array values that correspond to a display. And then we'll just swap out those numbers and it'll the image can change dynamically instead of statically. But we could, if we wanted to, go ahead and put an image on here and that would just be the image stuck on there. But what we're going to do is we're going to set it to a, an array. So we click here to bind and it brings us into here. And then we just have a little bit of uh, stuff to do in here. So I'm going to go ahead and right click here and break this linkage right here. And I guess the first thing that we should do is actually create in our, our array. So I'll come over here to where it says variable and I'll call this note card array and you can make arrays to store any almost anything which is pretty amazing but this is going to be a texture 2d so it's this one right here i'll compile and save this but i want it to be an array so i'll come down here and click on this and set it up as an array i'll compile and save it again and now i can put as many array elements as i want in here literally hundreds if i want but i'm just going to put in two for uh, example here and if I click here and we scroll down, you can see I can try to go searching for the image here, through here, if I can find it. But if I can't find it, these were called Journey. So I don't know if I'll find them here. Oh, there's, I think it was Journey, H-I-J, Journey 1. And here is Journey 2. So these should show up. Let me type in Journey to get to it journey to. So those are my images. Just like that I'll compile and save. So now these are referenced by the number simply 0, 1, and then so on and so forth for that. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do is we want to get player character. So I'm going to drag off of this and I'm going to cast to first person this one from here. And then I want to get the player character here. So I get the player character here. And that's all hooked up. And now I can go ahead and drag my array on here. I want to get it. I want to drag off from here and get it again. And then what I want to do is I've created the image index. I believe that was one of the first things I created. So what I'm going to do now is I think I can drag off of here and type in get note card. What is it? What do I call it? Note card index. Let me see. I got to go back. Sorry. What did I call this variable I created in here? Note card index. Okay. So I want to get that. So I want to get, get, I guess I can pull it off of here. Get note card index right here. Yeah. And we're going to plug this into here like that. The last thing I have to do is convert the 2D texture into a into a brush. So I'm going to drag off of here and we're going to call this make brush from texture. And we're going to pop this into here like that. Whoops. The return value into there like that. And then we're going to drag this into here like whoops. But things aren't sticking today. And the only thing is the height and width needs to be the same as the original image. So this is going to be 512 and 512, just like that. So that completes the functionality, our core functionality of creating an array, storing our images into that array, and then being able to call those up as needed. So we're going to go compile and save. And as far as I know, we're done with this piece of it. So the only thing we need to do now is just create a blueprint that kind of pulls all of this together. So we're going to come in here and I'm going to right click. Let me go to the content level. I'm going to go to blueprint class actor and I'm going to call this BP note maker. Right. And then I'm just going to double click this 
and I'm going to go ahead and uh, it kind of docked itself already. So in this part of it, one of the first things that I really want to do is create a marker and that's pretty simple to do. So I'm just going to come here. This is just so that I know where to go. So I'm going to go to sphere and this could be honestly anything you want. And I'm just going to make this point to point to point to and you can make it different colors. It could be anything that you really want it to be. And then I'm going to get a box collider. So we're going to tr make a trigger and call this box collider. And it's just going to go around the box like that. As the character walks up to it, it's going to be our trigger to trigger the display and, and me coming close to it and the character walking away from it as well. And so, of course, this could be made bigger if you want to scale this up. So let's. Let's just scale it, maybe scale it up just a little bit more. Like that, in all directions, it doesn't matter. Like that. Okay, so we have that part of it done, and we can compile and save that. And now we can come into the event graph, and we don't need on event begin, and we don't need this, but we want to have uh, an overlap, so we're going to go event overlap end this one and then we want to have a keyboard press as well so right click again and go keyboard and I'm just gonna I'm just, it could be anything you want it to be but I'm just gonna choose the letter D for display okay and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna trigger this with a what's called a flip-flop node so what we're going to do is we're going to drag off of here and before i get carried away we need to create a variable so let me let me just come in here and this is just going to be called note card and this is simply going to display on our user interface in the game and this is where we're going to put in assign our values to the instances so hopefully that'll make more sense in a minute here and we'll make this of course this has to be public which is the same as instance editable. So notice when I click this, you know, see how instance editable comes on and off. So this instance editable basically just means that we can all put the card numbers. As I drag an instance into the game level, I can set the index number. So if I have a hundred, I can set these all within the game as I go and it, they're all set. So anyway, but then they'll be set dynamically too. As the character walks up, each one will be different based on the same blueprint. So that's the convenience of all this. So hopefully this will make more sense once you see it in action. Sometimes it's hard to explain all this. So anyway, I'm going to drag this off here and I'm going to create what's called a flip flop node. It's a funny name, but it's you touch it once and it's this and you touch it again and it's something else. And here we're going to create our display. So this is really what's going to trigger our display. And so we're going to create widget and we're going to select the note card display that we've already created. And then we're going to off of here, we of course we've got to, let me kill this window here so we have some room. So off of here, we can just add to viewport. This is what allows us to actually see it. So we click add to viewport. And then we also want it to go away. We don't want it to stay there forever. So I'm going to drag off of here. And I should be able to put remove from parent. I can't do it from there. So let me do it from here. Remove from parent. And we'll trigger that on the B. So the sign will just display for momentarily while I'm there. Once the character walks away, this will trigger that part that the display will come up and go away based on the proximity to having triggered the box collider. So anyway, here's what we're going to do now is I have to here we go okay so on this one we're going to go ahead and enable our input and on this one this is going to disable our input so we've got this and we've got this and we're kind of on the home stretch here and here off of here I just want to get the player controller so there's that Got the player controller there. Then we're going to cast to to get our variable from that we stored over there, the card index, get first person 
blue uh, this one first person character and we want to get our here not our controller but we want to get our player character so get player character and there's that we're getting a little crowded here let me let's zoom out a little ways I don't, like, I don't like how crowded this is all getting but we're we're literally on the home stretch here so just uh, one more thing and then we just have to set these values so I'm going to drag off of here and get the note card index and this is the remember this is the variable that we've stored on the oh I don't want to get it I want to set it sorry about that so I want to set this set note card index yeah we want to set it and then I'll trigger it and then from here I can just drag our note card here get that and we're just gonna plug this in here and then on disable this is just going to go let's see I want this into remove from parent and that as far as I know is the entire functionality of the thing so if you want to just take a screenshot of this as your notes we can compile and save it and now this might make more sense once you see it in action okay so now we're going to go into the first person and here's my note what i call the note maker and i'm just going to drag it on here and let's say i left a little off the ground and you can see over here is where i can set it so i can bring in as many of these images as i want telling a whole story along the way. The first one is going to be, journey one is going to be zero, assigned to zero. And then if I drag this over here, let's say over here, and put it in the scene, I want this to be one. I can set these. And then once these are set, as you'll see, I can create an endless number of these. So now if I hit play, and I'm in the game, there's one of the markers there. I walk up to it, nothing happens, right? But I've actually triggered, I hit D, right? In the beginning, the crystal crack, look for the red sign in the road. May the force be with you. Now, as I walk away from this, it goes away. Now I come over here, there's another marker. I hit D again, and there's my, my next message. And then as I walk away, the message goes away. And there could be literally hundreds and hundreds of these along the way on the path of your game. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Just try it a few times and it'll all start making sense to you. Have a great day. Take care. And I'll talk to you next time.